A GMRS licensee and user has petitioned the FCC to give a low-band VHF frequency a new set of frequencies to GMRS and FRS users. This is kind of a neat story, and I think I'm in favor of it. Let's take a look. This article comes from Natcom Magazine, Natcom Mag, uh, National Communications Magazine. This is a subscription that I have, and I read interesting stories from it. I think the subscription is like five bucks a month. So if you like stories like this, I recommend subscribing to Natcom Mag like I do. I don't read all of the stories on purpose because I don't want to give away all of their behind the paywall info. GMRS and FRS, FCC has been petitioned for low VHF, low band channels. Now, what is low band? If you don't know what low band is, I've done some low band before. It's kind of, it's kind of fun. So VHF goes from 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. UHF goes from 300 megahertz to 3000 megahertz. I don't know who came up with these plans way back in the day, but that's just kind of what it is. So VHF, very high frequency, is from 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. So anything above 30 is considered and lower than 300 is considered VHF obviously. So generally speaking when you hear the term low band you're talking about somewhere between like 30 and 50 or 30 and 60 megahertz. Somewhere below the 6 meter band. The 6 meter band in ham radio is between 50 and 54 megahertz and it's considered the magic band. A lot of the times that band will open up and you'll be able to talk across the world with 5 watts of power and it's really fun, but it's not open all the time. There are police and fire departments in the past that have used low band, somewhere around the 46 to 48 megahertz frequency range. And you can buy radios on eBay or the used marketplace right now, and you can find low band radios that will do 50 to 100 watts, something like that. Kenwood makes one. But a lot of those frequencies have been kind of forgotten about, for lack of a better term, because a lot of companies have moved to higher band VHF or into the UHF or into the microwave frequencies. Now, GMRS right now, today, GMRS and FRS would share channels around the 462 megahertz range. 462 is obviously higher than 300. They're in the UHF megahertz range, UHF band. And the UHF band is great for closer communications or for communicating in a building and talking through walls, through con concrete or steel walls or something like that. But VHF low band or VHF in general is gen, and I'm talking in generalizations here, is generally going to be better for longer range communications. It's also going to require a longer antenna on your vehicle or your home if you're going to set up a low band radio to talk across a wider area. So the summary of this article here is a longtime GMRS licensee has submitted to the FCC a proposal to reallocate underused VHF low band radio frequencies for GMRS and FRS. The petition argues that these channels offer superior propagation characteristics compared to the current UHF frequencies used by FRS and GMRS. Again, current FRS and GMRS frequencies are around the 462 to 467 megahertz range. So the petition submitted to the FCC proposes sweeping changes to the reallocate underused VHF low band radio frequencies for GMRS. Shows a copy of the document there. The National Capital Communications LLC, also known as the Mid-Atlantic React in Washington, D.C. area, has formally requested that the FCC reallocate a series of outdated or abandoned frequencies in the 30 to 50 megahertz band to enhance GMRS and FRS capabilities, follow along as we detail the frequencies proposed in the petition and some background why these channels might prove workable for expanded uh, GMRS capabilities. The petition was submitted by Michael Trejos, KAB7046. That's a GMRS call sign. KAB7046, a longtime GMRS licensee who is also a physician. He's also a general class ham with a call of KB4PGC, and has other FCCC licenses too. Filed in response to a recent rulemaking efforts and aligned with President Trump's executive orders in promoting deregulation and efficient government operations, the petition highlights the growing need for longer range, publicly accessible communication tools in the face of increasingly severe natural disasters. So, like I said, longer range. So, FRS and GMRS, and G FRS radios are limited to, I think, 2 watts, I think it is. GMRS radios are limited to 50 watts, and GMRS can use um, outside external antennas. You can take the antenna off of the radio 
unscrew it from the top of the radio on a GMRS antenna and connect an external antenna on your vehicle or set a antenna up high up on your house and run a coax to it. A true FRS radio does not have a removable antenna. That's one of the things that GMRS gives you. GMRS also gives you up to 50 watts of power, so you can have a mobile radio with 50 watts of power or a base station radio with 50 watts of power, and you can use a repeater in GMRS. And what a repeater is, if you don't know, I've got several videos on this channel talking about repeaters and what they are and describes them. But it's basically a radio on top of a building or top of a tower, typically 150, 150 plus feet. Could be 400 feet, could be 1,000 feet, could be 2,000 feet. A repeater up on a high tower or building that captures the signal from your little handheld in your backyard or in your home or your vehicle and retransmits it in a wider area because on VHF and UHF, height is might. So the higher up you get an antenna, the higher up you are in elevation, if you're going to hike up a mountain or something, the better you can get a signal, a VHF, UHF signal. So when you have a UHF repeater in a high location, it can capture signals from a low location and retransmit them across a very much, a, a much wider area than what your small handheld radio has or your 50-watt mobile radio has. So these frequencies are excellent to use on repeaters and to use in close-range communications, which a lo often a lot of people use them in camping situations, overlanding, carpools, caravans, driving down the highway, and that's great. But VHF low band is capable of reaching much farther distances. You can talk across a metroplex or maybe across a state, depending on band conditions and atmospheric conditions. You can reach out and touch a little bit farther than you are used to with the current GMRS frequencies. Now, I think the question is, now I want to say first up, uh, I'm, I'm all in favor for this. I'm 100% in favor for this. We haven't read the whole article yet. I'm going to skim through the article and I will put a link in the description below. You guys can go check out the whole article yourself. But think of it like this. It's going to determine, it's going to depend on how many, how much power they're going to allow you to use. So 50 watts of power is, usable by GMRS users while only two are two watts of power is usable by FRS. And the difference is basically you just sign up. You pay $35 for a 10-year license to get GMRS call sign to use on GMRS frequencies. And then you open up this whole world of multiple power and different types of radios that you can't use with FRS. And low band will work great for longer distances like this article is telling us. And that is great, 30 to 50 megahertz. That's great. We're going to see what the actual, we're going to see what the actual frequencies are here in a second. But think about CB radio, which is around the 27, 26 to 27 megahertz band, and the limitations of CB radio because it is a free band, like FRS is free band. FRS is two watts on free band. CB radio is four watts on free band. It's, you can do 12 watts on sideband, four watts on AM. So it's a low power band because it is free band. So if you add GMRS to a low band VHF system and allow it a higher power, then you're going to really be able to reach out a lot farther. This goes on to say that a call sparked by crisis. The FCC filing points to Hurricane Helene, which devastated parts of Florida and the Carolinas in 2024, as a stark example of modern communication infrastructure's vulnerability. When cell towers went offline and amateur radio repeaters were knocked out, thousands of citizens were left without any way to call for help. Now, I spoke about this, and I interviewed some of the people who opposed Hurricane Helene on this channel, and we were talking about repeaters in the area, some that were knocked offline and some that were not. But there was a very good repeater network system that was usable in that area by hams, and they were taking traffic from non-hams also in post-emergency situations. So it would be nice to have... An alternative to ham radio and low band frequencies, something that would reach out a little bit farther in post-crisis situations. I agree with this article, but also remember that if you had a ham radio license, you would already have access to this type of technology. Now, if you're interested in getting your ham radio license, I recommend Ham Radio Prep. Go check out hamradioprep.com. They sell packages of license courses, the Technician, General, and Extra, all three courses. They sell MCOM courses. Talk a lot about MCOM in this article here. They sell packages of uh, Baofeng Basics courses and HF courses and the Technician courses all together. You can save a 20% discount on all of their courses with the coupon code of Jason20. So if you're interested in getting more involved into radio and having even more, if they pass this, if the FCC approves this 
and they pass low band for GMRS, then you'll have a, a UHF band and a low band VHF band. So you have two bands you can talk on on GMRS. And that's great. And like I said, I'm in favor of that. But Ham Radio already has like 30 bands. We have like 30 bands we can talk on with a technician license, 50 megahertz and up. So you've already got this low band thing covered in a different frequency range, but it's still low band. And all the way up through your VHF, UHF, and microwave frequencies. Lots of great stuff in ham radio. Check out the link in the description below. What frequencies are targeted? Because that's kind of what I was asking when I first read this article. The proposal calls for the reallocation of three main sets of frequencies. Old cordless telephone channels, 46 and 49 megahertz. Okay. Once popular in the 1980s, analog cordless phones operating in the 43 to 49 megahertz range have all but disappeared. Nobody has a land. These are landline phones. Cordless landline phones is what they're talking about. According to the NCC's analysis, 10 channel pairs, channels 16 through 25, have no active FCC license and could be repurposed for GMRS repeater operations, supporting both simplex and duplex communications up to 100 watts. Low power baby monitor and walkie talkie channels, 49.83 to 49.89 megahertz. This is right below the six meter band for amateur radio. Once used for remote control cars, walkie-talkies, and household baby monitors. I had a walkie-talkie on 49 megahertz when I was a kid. There was nobody else on it. I always was trying to make some kind of contact on that, but I, I never got anyone contacted on that. These low-power channels are now largely obsolete. NCC proposes allocating these five channels for unlicensed 2-watt FRS use. Okay, good idea. Enabling personal and emergency communications without the need for specialized licenses. Okay. Abandoned VHF paging frequencies, 35 and 43 megahertz. These channels previously were used by commercial paging services and are no longer in use. NCC recommends reallocating seven of these frequencies to GMRS with the potential for a 300 watt repeater operations in an eight megahertz separation for enhanced range. I don't know about 300 watts. That might be kind of overkill for a low band, something like that. Depends on what you're trying to do. You know, they kind of squashed the whole repeater linking thing in the world of GMRS. And I don't really understand why that is. There's some videos out there, and I've watched a little bit of it. And I know what the claim is, and I've got some additional ideas on top of that. But it doesn't sound like they really want GMRS to be that far-reaching. But things change over time, and that's all well and good. And the reallocation of these unused frequencies, I think, is a very good thing. The petition argues that these VHF low-band channels offer propagation characteristics that far outseed the range of today's VH, uh, UHF, FRS, and GMRS radios. That is true. That is a true statement right there, okay? That is a true statement. However, CB radio also offers that because it's just, uh, like I said, 26 to 27 megahertz, and it's right below the frequency range we're talking about here. The bootstrap, the bottleneck that is that prevents CB radio from being legally allowed to do farther range is that they limit the radios to 4 watts on AM and 12 watts on sideband. So if they get these proposed power limits up to 100 watts for that first set and up to 300 watts for that lower set, if they get those proposed power limits passed, I think that will be a larger step in making these more useful. Because we could put these uh, frequencies in use today and on only... 5 or 10 watts of power, you're not going to get much further than your stock CB radio is. But if you were to add 100 watts or 300 watts to a CB radio, you'd be able to accomplish the almost the exact same goal, especially now that CB radio allows FM use as well as AM and sideband use. Unlike higher frequencies, which often require more line of sight to repeaters, signals in the 30 to 50 megahertz range can travel over hills, through buildings, and even bounce off the atmosphere, which is ideal for emergencies when infrastructure is down. Absolutely correct statement. This is the type of thing that you learn in your ham radio test when you go take your first technician test. Precedent and policy alignment. The petition cites earlier FCC actions that created the multi-use amateur radio service, MERS, which is uh, around the 151 megahertz range, which is, again, VHF, between 30 and 300 megahertz, by reallocating business VHF frequencies like 151 and 154 megahertz right here. It notes that the proposed changes follow a similar model and align with federal push towards simplifying regulatory structures and enhancing public access to critical communications. Next steps, the NCC is urging the FCC to assign a rulemaking number and open a proposal for broader comment. If approved, the changes could mark one of the most significant reallocations of personal radio spectrum 
in decades. I would be in fa I would totally be in favor of this. I have a GMRS license. My call sign is WRFK311. And if they propose something like this and they start releasing they start releasing radios that are FCC type compliant for GMRS, which there's a lot of guys using Motorola and Harris radios, which are part 90 and not part 95 on GMRS today. I mean, nobody really cares, and that's that's fine. But there's a lot of low band radios out there on the market right now on used low band radios that you can get for really cheap because nobody's using those frequencies right now. So if they reallocate this, there's going to be a lot of used equipment that you could use on this. And I will absolutely be investing in something like that and getting out on the air and trying out this new, these new frequencies on these new bands. Just remember that the lower the frequency, this is something else you learn in your ham radio test, okay? The lower the frequency, the taller your antenna. So on your really, really low frequencies on HF and MF and LF, you're going to need a much taller, much longer antenna than you do on VHF and UHF. You can get away with a really short, stubby antenna on UHF on top of your vehicle because the frequency is around 462 megahertz. But in order to use low band properly, now you can get compromised and coiled antennas and you can get shorter antennas and more compact antennas, stuff that will work but not work quite as well. But in order to be as efficient as you want to and actually be able to reach out and communicate, you're going to have to have a much taller antenna, similar to the old CB whips, the 102-inch whips, something like that. Not quite that tall because CB is on a lower frequency than what uh, the proposal is here for these low-band ones. So not quite as tall as a CB antenna, but much, much taller than your standard UHF GMRS antenna that you're used to having on your car now. So just keep that in mind. There's a compromise for everything. And you can use a compromised antenna for these low bands, but you're not going to it's not going to be as efficient. Or you're just going to have to deal with putting a taller antenna on your car, which doesn't bother me at all. You should see my truck that I have now. Let me know what you guys think about this new proposal in the comments section below. Love to hear your thoughts. Check out the links in the description below. 73. We'll catch you next time.